So Sayed, wasn't too long ago, you were in Smecula, picked up the W, what's it like to kind of almost have like an instant replay back in the same venue? Uh, it's awesome, you know, always being at home is good, you don't have to travel, your family gets to come and uh, you know, I'm right back on it, coming off of a win, same place, same people, same crowd, same results. There we go. Now, of course, you've talked a lot about you're looking to get to that title shot, you're looking, you know, back on the main card. Just, are you looking to change up anything in terms of calling anyone out if, when you get the W after this one, or how does it work from here? As you've just continued to develop, you're one of the veterans of the lightweight division and you've fought a, quite a number of guys. I mean, I, I think I put myself in a position where I don't really need to call too many people out. You know, I'm gonna do whatever Belzer tells me. Even when I call people out, it doesn't really go my way, but uh, I think I am in the top of the division, so me calling anybody out would be probably calling somebody out under me. I mean, no disrespect to the other fighters, but that's how I kind of feel. So, I mean, whoever is, a, you know, a, above me, that's who I'd like to fight. You know, I'd have to look at or talk to Bellator and see who they think is above me and then go from there. Have you felt more love being on the Comey the second time now? Yeah, yeah, this time around, I, I definitely have. Uh, yeah, yeah, everyone's been good to me. Just can't complain. Do you feel the pressure, any extra pressure being on the Comey? Not, not at all. I was just talking to one of the guys that are on the undercard, you know, saying, uh, talking about, you know, too bad I'm not on the main card. I said, bro, you still got to fight. Regardless if it's the main event, co-main event, undercard, first card, you're still fighting. You're still fighting somebody tough, so uh, it doesn't make a difference. It's a fight to fight. You fought a couple times in some catch weights around the 160 um, area, and there's been discussion of possibly opening up more divisions. Do you think that that would be your home if they did open up a 160-165 like division? Yeah, I would definitely like a 160-165 division. I mean, I don't... The weight cut's not as hard as it was anymore. You know, I got kind of got it down a lot better to 55s, but... Um, I don't mind fighting catchweight, obviously, you know, I've been, I've been fought at 170, but if they did open the division at 60 or 65, I'd probably be the first in line. Have you heard anything from the promotion recently about that? I haven't. No, not at all. Not for any catchweight or any new divisions. It's only been a few months, but has anything changed in terms of your training or has any new developments in your life that maybe, you know, we haven't known about yet as fans? Um, I think a lot of fans do know, but I mean, a lot of stuff's happened. You know, I had my baby boy uh, last month, mm. which is, you know, a blessing. And uh, also I switched camps a couple months ago, you know, so I'm working with uh, at the training lab with uh, Sam Calavita and uh, the guys over there, there's a bunch of good talent in the room. So um, I, I kind of did a 360 with almost my whole life, you know, in the past couple months, which has been uh, for the good, you know, it's been good. Was it less pressure this time around than having had your child that obviously you were in training camp and you, you also couldn't, because I think your wife was here and pregnant, pregnant at the time, wasn't she? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, has, it, has it been easier this time in a sense that you were wanting to be there and around it all and, you know, through a very tough camp? You know, it definitely was, you know, or it is. You know, last time, you know, she was pregnant, so it was hard, you know, when your wife's pregnant, everything's, you know, you're worried about stuff, you have doctor's mm. appointment, you, something's wrong, you have to rush to the hospital, go get checked, and uh, it was definitely a little bit, um, you know, stressful when she was pregnant, but now, uh, you know, she had the baby, thank God, the baby's healthy and uh, everything's good. So now it's definitely a stress reliever. Um, and she, she's been awesome. She wakes up with the baby every night, lets me sleep because she knows I'm in camp. So um, I, you know, I haven't had the, the waking up every you know, two hours with the newborn yet. I'll probably get it when I come back after the fight, but you know, nothing yet. So it's been good. It's been daddy good. duty. Yeah, daddy duty, there it is. Yeah. How are you with changing diapers so far? Uh, I'm a pro. <laughs> <laughs> I, got, I got a toddler too that's barely, we're trying to get her out of the diapers. So it's like, you know, I got one, she got one, we're going back and forth. In a weird way, a lot of fighters have told me in the past that it's actually um, because you can often work your own schedule as a fighter and in, in how you want to work, it's, you can actually be a much more present dad in the times that you need to be around as well. And you can actually be more of a father figure. Exactly, 100%. I feel like um, you know, that's, that's, that's awesome for us fighters because you know, most fighters pick this... Um, this career, because they, they don't like going to nine to five. They don't exactly. like working, you know, for, for people. I mean, or eight, to, or eight to late as it now is generally, and families don't spend that much time together. Exactly, yeah. yeah. So yeah. now I kind of make my own schedule. If I want to take Friday off, I'm taking Friday off. You know, mm -hmm. if I want to take Saturday off. I, mean, I do have a schedule I, I pretty much stick to, but I don't have to, you know what I mean? If I'm not feeling good, I'm staying home. If my baby's sick, I'm going to the hospital. It's not, I don't have to ask somebody, hey, can I take off to, to you know, do what I gotta do, daddy do, as you, as you say. So, yeah, it's good. You're, you're someone who 
creeps up on us in this sport. You show what you have. You're not. You, you're, you're a grower, not a shower, if I can put it that way. Is that all right to say? <laughs> yeah. Um, no, but it's true. Yeah. It's the way you're showing your skills. How excited were you if you saw it yesterday about the DAZN announcement with Bellator that's going to project uh, the fighters, the sport, the events onto a much bigger platform in more countries now? You know, I think that's great news. You know, I have a lot of family overseas, you know, all over the world. You know, I've, you know it's not just family, but family. And a lot of them, they can't watch my fights. You know, a lot of them, their internet's blocked in the countries they're at. Mm. And uh, uh, there are certain websites, but, you know, this is something that's going to open up and it's going to be mainstream for everybody. It's going to be live. So we're going to be able to tune in and it's going to broaden the audience for, for all of us fighters. So, you know, it's, it's good for everybody all the way around. It's good. Yeah, you've had these, you know, things that you've spoke about, fatherhood and, and just, um, you know, building your streak at, here at Bellator. So what can we expect to see as far as growth and, and something new from you in this um, turnaround, this fight week? I mean, I've been, I've, I've been around for a while, but I think uh, you're going to see a... Um, a lot more aggression. i um, be able to go out there and be aggressive. You know, I'm always pretty aggressive, but be pretty aggressive for if I have to go three rounds. You know, it's going to be nonstop for three rounds. I'm, I'm really confident in my cardio, and um, I know Ryan's you know supposed to be a, a grinder, and I usually do good against grinders. And I think that with this camp and being, you know, with the new training behind me and the new strength and conditioning, I think I'm going to be able to go out there and uh, if I have to outgrind him, outgrind him and make it a real bad fight for him for three rounds. Fan of his fathers. Big fan of his father's. So I have a book that he signed for me um, when I first started fighting. I mean, he probably didn't even know it, but it's at home. It's in my safe. That, uh, I'm a big fan of his father's. It's so unfortunate he's probably not going to look at me the same, but <laughs> I guess he'll always remember me, right? Yeah. Well, I think he's going to be in the corner, isn't he? Of so, course he is, yeah. Will you have a little glance over at the old man and take a little bit of inspiration and then beat his son? <laughs> uh, <laughs> if I have to, if I have to, you know, I respect him. I respect him. At the end of the day, you know, I mean, I got to feed my kids and I got to do what I got to do. So it's going to go and I'm going to have a good fight. How did this matchup uh, get presented to you? Was it an option or? Uh, I don't really have options here. You know, I kind of get calls and, hey, we got this fight on this date. And 99% uh, of the time I say, yeah. You know, it's, um, you know, I mean, before this fight, they, they had offered me somebody else. And I said, yeah, and that person got injured. And then they said, we guarantee we'll get you someone. So as soon as this jumped up, I was like, thank God, you know, I got someone I'm still on the same card and uh, the fight's still gonna happen. So, so yeah. And it's at a catch weight, right? It's at a catch weight. Yeah. He asked for it, which which I don't mind. You know, like I said, I'll, I'll fight at 60, 65. You know, I fought at 70, but um, it gave me time to put on a little bit more muscle, and then I cut back down because I, you know, I knew I was fighting for the past, you know, five months. So I've been training for for a pretty long time now for this fight. Well, I didn't know I was fighting him, but I knew I was fighting for about five months. The, the, they they're having the heavyweight tournament. They've announced a welterweight tournament. Um, would you like them to? have another tournament and include you in that? I was already texting them. They said, you know, I'm not getting any feedback yet, probably because they don't want to say anything, but from as far as I know, that they haven't said anything about a lightweight tournament. I told them if they need an alternate in the heavyweight tournament, I'll, <laughs> you know, I'll, I'll be their guy. But That's you know, how keen you are. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm looking forward to the both tournaments. You know, the, the World Trade Tournament is going to be super exciting. I don't know who's all in it. I know some of the guys, but um, when they do announce it, that division is pretty stacked. So I'm definitely looking forward to watch that one, but I would love a lightweight tournament. I think that's what we need. Because the thing is about you, you're saying about regularity. Mm -hmm. When you when you're in a tournament, um, you kind of know that it's going to be spaced, and you know if you know you win, you, you, you know you're going to fight in four months time, and you can fight in four months time. And there's no kind of doubts about when you're at next. Because um, as you say, being active for you is really key now. It's definitely key. You know what I mean? I I give myself a couple more years fighting. You know what I mean? Hopefully five, you know, but if, if not, if it's smaller than that, then it is what it is. But, um, you know, right now my, my future is uncertain because I don't know how, how much I'm going to fight. So I can't say I'm making this amount of money and I'm guaranteed three or four fights. I'm guaranteed this. No, it's not that way. You know, sometimes you fight once and get injured or you can fight twice. I fought twice last year and I was expecting three times. Mm. This is my second fight this year. I still have six more months. So I'm hoping, you know, I'm praying that I get a fight at least one more time. So, you know, I can be content for the year. What, what's, what's, obviously you're talking about being a father, you've got two young children, um, what's running in the background for your future? Have you opened your own gym? If, if you have, it, I might forgive my ignorance. Um, what, what is going on for you in the background when you do stop in, say, five years' time? You know, I have a couple of things in my mind. You know, I grew up, my dad had a couple of businesses, so he kind of, um, you know, put me through the ringer growing up on how to, you know, do the stuff. Graft. I, yeah, so, so I learned a lot. So I do plan on, you know, opening something, some kind of business, probably a gym. Definitely a gym, you know, for something I like to help the youth, mm. you know, but I would like my name to be a little bit bigger so I can open it and people will come and it'll be there so I'm not losing money right when I open it, you know, mm. even if I break even, I'll be happy with that.
But I definitely want to open you know, a couple of businesses you know, after I'm done fighting. People are, uh, a lot of athletes are more open about their use of CBD products. I think I saw an interview where you said that that's something that you, you know, use with recovery and, and are a big fan of it. Mm -hmm. Can you just talk a little bit about that? And is that maybe a business that you'd go into? Uh, I, I definitely, I definitely, if I had the opportunity, if the opportunity to present itself, I definitely would. Um, yeah, I have a, one of my sponsors, Turp House. Um, uh, the guy over there, he's really big in the uh, MMA. He was a fighter growing up. So he knows what kind of damage you can take fighting. He's done a lot of research, and uh, and CBD does help, you know, protect your brain cells. You know, it helps with concu before concussions. You know, if you take it before you spar, it could, you know, literally prevent a concussion. And once I heard that and I started doing more research, I figured out it's true. You know, so um, so I'm a big fan of it. I take it every morning. I take it every time before I spar. I take it every time before I go to bed. You know, and um, I'm, I'm glad they don't test for it. You know, I'm glad it's not something that's on the radar, and because it's really, you know, it's a medicine, and uh, better than taking, you know couple of pills when you're not feeling good, I'd rather take some CBD and let it do its thing. Just to follow up to that last question, I know that that, you know, those substances, marijuana products are legal in the state of California. What about here on this, uh, on this reservation? Asking for a friend. Um, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I just hit my CBD on the way in the door, bro. No, I, no, CBDs are, <laughs> with CBD are good. You're allowed to sell, C if you're not from California, you can sell CBD over the counter. And you, you're good. So CBD is something that um, they don't test for because it's not, it's not, I don't think it's a banned substance anymore. It's not performance in Yeah, it's not performance in either. either. So, um, so you, and you can take it, you can sell it, you can you take it in front of a copy. It's not something that they're, they're against. I mean, even now in California, marijuana, you can walk in, show an ID, buy some weed, and you know, you're good. Uh, if, if your friend wants to know. Right. So maybe, they, <laughs> uh, maybe the U.S. will follow suit with, with Canada soon, and then we won't have to worry about there you go. maybe them being a discussion. Yep. All right, thanks, guys. Thank you. Thank you so much.